Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia, along with his fellow Rastafarian followers. A somewhat eccentric young man, but a devout believer in his religion and his culture and his way of life. leads in the champion Livingstone Bramble making his first title defense against the man from whom he lifted the WBA lightweight crown on June 1st of 1984. Bill Evans can't breathe. Well, the champion Livingstone Bramble 24 years of age with a decided height advantage came in well under the weight 133 and three-quarter pounds. Mancini, on the other hand, had to shed a pound at the weigh-in this morning of the bout. Came in ultimately right at 135. And, of course, the shorter Mancini standing 5'5 five, five and a half. The reach advantage of Bramble was a factor in the first bout between the two. Referee Mills Lane brings them in for round one. Ray Boom Boom Mancini, the challenger. On the left of your screen, in black with red trim, and the champion Livingstone Bramble, with his now familiar cornrow hairstyle and his Rastafarian culture, native of the islands in the Caribbean, the Virgin Islands, and now living in Montclair, New Jersey. His first title defense in his last outing in a non-title bout, he scored a 10-round decision over Edwin Curet. Mancini has not fought since he lost the crown to Bramble, June 1 of 84. And that layoff could well be a factor in this bout. Scheduled for 15 rounds. Scoring by three judges at ringside. They are Dave Moretti from Las Vegas, Jimmy Rondeau from Seattle, Ed Levine from Miami. Good combination scored by Mancini. First effective punches of the bout. The drama surrounding Mancini primarily as to whether or not this will be his last fight, win or lose. He's indicated it may be, but the outcome could change all of his thoughts. Right by Bramble, the champion, his first clean shot. And Cini claimed that he had overtrained for the last fight. Had nothing when he entered the ring. No legs, no strength, no punching power. Shortened his training regimen for this bout and told us a couple of days ago that he is as fit mentally and physically as he should be for this effort at regaining his crown. Uppercut scored by the champion, Bramble. The right-hand lead scored by Mancini. Under a minute to go, round one. A sellout crowd at the Lawler Event Center in Reno, Nevada, on the campus of the University of Nevada, Reno. Tremendous interest in the fight. And lots of boxing celebrities on hand, as they are always for a big fight. This is a big fight. Good body shot by Bramble. Bramble, as he was in the first fight, patient. Cool, calculating. Solid right down the pipe by Bramble. Get him up, come on, come on. Get him up, come on. Busy round for both fighters as we approach the final second. Bramble scores a combination to the head of Mancini. There weren't a lot of people in the world uh, who thought I was going to beat the great Sugar Ray Robinson. I felt that I'd worked hard and that I'd studied well and that I had everything in order and I felt within myself that I could do it. Anytime anything works out the way you plan, it's got to be great and this worked out uh, every bit as good as we'd planned and uh, I had the middleweight championship. So it was a great thrill. Oh. The challenger, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, the champion, Livingstone Bramble. A little swelling by the left eye of Mancini. 
picked up in round number one. Bramble, 22 victories, one defeat, one draw, 14 knockouts. Mancini has lost twice to Bramble and to Alexis Arguello in his attempt to win the WBC lightweight crown. Arguello is here at ringside and there's an open Mancini booster. Good combination by Mancini, good counter left hook by Mancini after the uh, scoring punches from the champion Bramble. Short right by Bramble scores and a good solid left jab. Much of the speculation surrounding Mancini's strategy was that he would try to move more than he did in the first fight. So far, he has been primarily flat-footed in the center of the ring. And that's where Bramble is happy to have him. Mancini with short punches scoring, not a lot on them, but all scoring punches in the last exchange. Two scheduled for 15. Both fighters content to try to score inside on these short, choppy punches. Under a minute to go in round two. Bramble with those long arms. Very difficult to hit when he covers up in that peekaboo style. Mancini trying to get to the body, but Bramble defending well with his elbows. Good solid right. Backed up Bramble a step by Mancini. Bramble scored a right lead uppercut. Mancini missing. back to the jab. Final seconds of round number two. Champion uh, gives him a little more working room against the basically brawling style of Mancini who likes to get his man to the ropes. It's a long distance to get there from the center of the ring. Over the first two rounds, however, Mancini has been content to fight out in the center of the ring, flat-footed with Bramble. Bramble is patient style waiting to counter good body punching by the challenger Mancini the right by Bramble just missed there is a slight abrasion on the left eyelid of Mancini he's been bothered with that somewhat in training camp does not appear to be serious at this point Bramble, who switched to the southpaw style in round three of the first fight, and then later in rounds seven through ten, using it effectively, says he doesn't plan to do that very much, but we see him turned around right now. Mancini landing two left hooks to the head of Bramble. Now Bramble fighting basically square on, and alternating left to right. Landed a good, solid right hand to the ear of Mancini and a short, chopping right by the champion. And again, Mancini staying right there. Most people felt that was not the strategy he should use in this bout. A little blood from that left eyelid now, Mancini, who continues to bore in right in front of the champion. Under a minute to go in round number three. Dig digging left hook, trying to get to the body, but they are taken by the arms of Bramble. Now there's a left uppercut scored by the challenger. 
Bramble misses badly, and they're head-to-head -head at dangerous territory. Short uppercut scored by Bramble. And another short right. Punishing round. Under the 32nd mark. Combination scored by Bramble. Another short right uppercut. Mancini will not move away from there. Left jab by Mancini. Counter punches landed by Bramble. Short right by the champion. Toe to toe they go. Final seconds of round three. Both fighters landing. NBA Lightweight Championship, Tim Ryan ringside in Reno, Nevada at the Lotto Event Center. A close round, the third one as we saw it. I scored it for the champion Bramble, but uh, Mancini was actually the busier of the two and could wind up as the winner of that round on the scorecard. So far, the pattern's similar to the first fight. Big uppercut by Bramble grazed the chin of Mancini. And what is similar about it is that Mancini is as busy as he was in the first fight and stays right in front of Bramble, and Bramble counterpunches patiently and lands the, the harder, cleaner shots, as he did with that left uppercut. Lou Duva, in his corner, said to Bramble, listen for my count when there's 10 seconds in the round. Do not let Mancini steal around in the final seconds from you. Bramble has not forced the fight. He is patiently counterpunching, as he did when he won the championship. Good right counter punch by Bramble landed. Caught Mancini open as he missed a left hook. In the Bramble corner, trying to get him to go to the body of Mancini. Missed a wild right. Back boxing in the orthodox, right-handed style at the moment. Has already shown his southpaw style in round three. Mancini landed a left hook in that last exchange. Definitely Mills Lane has not had much to do here. He's doing a good job of staying out of the way. The fighters have not clinched yet. Mancini jabbing a little more effectively here in round four, and that brings Bramble's jab. A little blood from the nose of Ray Mancini. That's common occurrence in his bouts. He bleeds easily from the nose. Under a minute to go. Round number four. Again, effective counterpunching by Bramble to the body this time. Now Bramble with a flurry. Mancini blocking those. Left hook to the body by Mancini landed. Combination by Bramble. Slowed Mancini's attack and a solid left jab by the champion. All of the action has taken place in the center of the ring. We're into round number four, approaching the final seconds. Neither fighter has had his back to the rope at any point thus far. Here we go. Round number five, 15-round WBA lightweight championship. Ray Boom Boom Mancini, the challenger. Livingstone Bramble, the champion. Most everyone here and everybody looking in on television wondering if it is the last appearance of Ray Boom Boom Mancini. the spectators at ringside, the young actor playing Mancini in his television movie, Doug McKeon. Must be an emotional moment for that young man, watching Mancini in the ring in this most important test of his boxing career. Trying to regain the crown he lost to Bramble last June. So far, Mancini has not shown any signs of ring rust. He's been very active and quite sharp. Power loss seems to be apparent, however. He has not been able to move Bramble. He was not able to move him in the Buffalo fight. Bramble, a very strong lightweight, and yet came in at 133 and three quarters. Same pattern of the bout, standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, short punches inside, 
by both boxers, all in the center of the ring. A little blood from the left eye of Mancini now, and it may be a new cut near the corner of his eye. Bramble with excellent concentration. Good combination by Bramble. That hurt Mancini. Now there's a cut in the right corner, the corner of the right eye of Boom Boom Mancini. Off a good combination by the champion. But Mancini refuses to move out of there. Now Bramble, seeing the blood, throwing more punches. Under a minute to go in round five. Bramble scoring with two consecutive rights. Mancini backs Bramble up to the rope. Good solid left jab by the champion, Bramble. Mancini continues to throw punches, but unable to move Bramble. Bramble trying to work closer, misses an overhand right. Now scores with the uppercut. Mancini with a left back. Under the 30-second mark. Bill's Lane, one of the few times he's had to separate the boxers with the seconds winding down in round number five. The excellent cut man working quickly on two cuts. The corner of the right eye of Mancini, and it appears the other one is on the eyelid of his left eye. And we are approaching round number six. These could be factors. That's Murphy Griffith, his trainer, trying to loosen up the challenger. Mancini has continued to stay right in front of Bramble through the first five rounds. And while Mancini has la landed many scoring punches, as in the first fight, Bramble has landed the more effective punches. Round number six. Tim Ryan ringside at the Reno Event Center. Ray Boom Boom Mancini, Livingstone Bramble, the WBA Lightweight Championship. First defense by Bramble. Bramble, when he saw the blood from the cut at the corner of the right eye of Mancini in round five, came up with a flurry of punches. Otherwise, he has been quite patiently counter-punching, as is his style. A little more movement from Mancini here in round six. Circling. Bramble content to stay in that peekaboo defense until he sees an opening and then lash out with combination. Booze from the crowd, a largely partisan Mancini crowd. Neither fighter able to land an effective punch in the last exchange. Now, Bramble has switched around to the southpaw stance again. Mancini made him pay for that with a solid right. That's punch of the fight by Mancini. Brings back a flurry from Bramble. Another right scored by Mancini. Bramble staying in the southpaw stance. Another right scored by Mancini. That brings the crowd alive. Bramble now just resting as, Brant as Mancini continues to pound away. Mancini digs to the body, brings it up to the head. Under a minute to go. Finally a flurry back from Bramble, but he missed him. champion with two short lefts, but Mancini has been the busier boxer in this sixth round. A little blood from the cut at the corner of Mancini's right eye again, starting to trickle down his cheek. Under the 30-second mark we go. Another solid right by Mancini, who seems to have found a weakness when Bramble goes to the southpaw stance. Mancini's been landing the right hand.
Coming to the end of round number six, a big round for the challenger, Ray Boom Boom Mancini. And a little rest time for the champion, Bramble. Number seven, the crowd chanting boom, 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 boom between rounds, happy at the performance of their favorite in round number six. A close fight as we see it at this point. Livingstone Bramble, the champion on the left of your screen. Should the cuts become a factor, under new WBA rules put in at their October convention last fall, the doctor can come in, examine the cuts, and tell the referee to stop the fight. One would hope that will not play a role in this battle tonight on the part of either boxer. Round number seven scheduled for 15, the distance for the WBA lightweight championship, Tim Ryan at ringside. Well, there's Bramble's first little effort at showboating, waving his right hand around, threatening a bolo punch, but never unleashed it. Mancini calmly walks in, landed a combination, and Bramble popped the jab back. Blood from the cut at the corner of the right eye of Mancini again. Lou Duva screaming from the Bramble corner to keep the jab moving. Bramble a little busier here in this round than he was in round six when he appeared to be taking a rest. Mancini took advantage. Going on the 10-point must system by three judges at ringside. Dave Moretti of Las Vegas, Jimmy Rondo from Seattle, Ed Levine from Miami. No playing the referee does not figure in the scoring. Lane working his 18th championship bout. Good solid left jab by the champion Bramble. Under a minute to go in round seven. Bramble missing with a right. Blood from both cuts. The eyes of Ray Mancini starting to look a little angrier. Mancini circling more over the last two or three rounds. It's proved to be effective for him. Bramble, meanwhile, has gone back to his orthodox stance. Mancini has not been able to land the right hands he scored in round six. Under the 30-second mark we go. Right scored by Mancini to the ear of Bramble. He turned away as the punch came in. Vision now may be affected in the left eye of Mancini. There's more swelling there. Bramble pecking away when he can at those eyes. Final seconds of round number seven. Okay. I can't see him. My left eye keeps going down, closing. I can't see him shots. You can't see him? No. I wish they fall. My bad is it? Oh. Just keep moving that head. Keep moving that head. Just keep moving that head. Don't let it stay. Move it head side to side. Move that head side to side. I'm going to take the fight. The fight is even higher. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Round number eight. Mancini dances off his stool to the center of the ring. The stoic and patient Bramble shows little emotion at any time. Relaxed, confident in his style. Excellent concentration, keeps his eye on the target. Mancini's left eye swollen, noticeably from the last round. Bramble, who feels that he's fighting the All-American boy, that the crowd wants Mancini to win, he knows that. Convinced that America wants Mancini to win his title back, and so has adopted the role of being the underdog, despite being the champion. The man the fans love to hate doesn't seem to bother him. He wants to win. He wants to be the most important champion from the Caribbean. A very determined young man. Into the eighth round, but the swelling over Mancini's left eye must be having difficulty seeing. It's now nearly half shut. And evidently, between rounds seven and eight, he informed his corner he's having difficulty with his vision.
Bill Mancini busy, busy in the center of the ring, has not changed his style in this fight from the last one. It's the gutty Ray Mancini performance. His best round came in the sixth when Bramble, when Bramble switched to the southpaw style. Mills Lane, the referee, has stopped time in this eighth round and asked the doctor to come in and examine the eyes of Ray Mancini, Dr. Charles Filippini. Good. Now remember, under the new WBA rules, the doctor can decide whether to stop the fight. And he's asking Ray if he can see out of the left eye. And he's allowing the fight to continue here in round eight. Obviously, they will be watching closely the eyes of Ray Mancini. And a macabre memory comes to mind of the press conference on Thursday where Bramble pulled out a voodoo doll and scratched the eyes of it, indicating that that's what would happen to Mancini in this fight. Mancini digging back to the body. Now a sense of some desperation on the part of the challenger, knowing that the doctor is ready to stop this at any time. He's got to make something happen against the calm and confident champion. Bramble waits for the openings and then throws two or three punches at a time and backs into his defensive stance. His long arms protecting his face and body. And Mancini is having difficulty scoring. There's a right that got through from Mancini. Good solid left jab by the champion Bramble. Bramble missed the combination. Round number nine upcoming, and they worked feverishly in the corner on the eyes of Ray Mancini. Paul Percyfield did a pretty good job. It looks like Mancini was able to see at least temporarily out of that left eye, but it is closing. Bramble has taken advantage of it in the last two rounds as we have scored it, and he's taken the lead on our cars. Livingstone Bramble, the champion. Relaxed and confident as he has been in preparation for this bout. And right from the opening bell. Trying that overhand right, missing it twice. And again, then came back with an uppercut underneath. His corner telling him to go to the right side, meaning Mancini's left side, where they feel Mancini can no longer see well. Bramble seems to be lifting his game here. Adding more pressure. Mancini stays right there. This entire fight has taken place in the center of the ring. A good left hook to the body by Bramble. Backed up Mancini. The right and the left of the body by Bramble. Mancini going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Mancini toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champion Bramble. A tremendous exchange. And Mancini had to back off. Perhaps a little arm-weary. He knows no other way to fight. All of the advice in the world will not change Mancini's attack and style and courage, but Bramble sensing that Mancini has not got much left and with those eyes seriously damaged in terms of the vision, picks up his own game in this ninth round. Bramble, the unorthodox champion in the ring and out of the ring, but with the tools and the style to be difficult for anybody and in command here over these last two or three rounds. Under a minute to go in round number nine. It does not appear that Mancini has the power to move the champion. And as the fight winds down, and Mancini is faced with the task of perhaps knocking out Bramble to win. It doesn't look like he has the tools to do it. Bramble waves him in, indicating that he's not being hurt by Mancini's punches. But Mancini picking up points here in this foray of Bramble into the ropes.
excellent conditioning by both boxers is clearly evident. Big combination by the champion there. Snap back the head of Mancini. The end of round nine. Can't see him shot. A poignant moment in the corner of Ray Boom Boom Mancini, the former WBC champion, Alexis Arguello, the man who defeated Mancini, but afterwards became a close friend, has been twice over to the corner of Mancini, exhorting him and offering advice. Come on, no single punches. Get this guy now. Don't let him get ahead. Round number 10, Tim Ryan ringside in Reno. Ray Boom Boom Mancini with a cut at the corner of his right eye, a cut on the left eyelid that is swollen. And a problem with his vision, Bramble, and his patient style continues to pound away at the face of Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Another dramatic chapter in the Ray Mancini story unfolding here in Reno as a typically gritty display against a man who appears to have the number who appears to have the sign, the strength to handle Ray Boom Boom Mancini, who has lost only twice in his career, Arguello, and to this man Bramble, who took the crown from him last June. Now Bramble around in that southpaw style again. Mancini was able to score right hands in round six when Bramble switched this way. Paul Percyfield in the Mancini corner has done a good job. There's a solid left by Bramble. Snaps back the head of the challenger. Dr. Filippelli, the ring physician, came in to look at Mancini between rounds 9 and 10. But allowed him to continue. Scheduled for 15 under the WBA regulations. Right uppercut scored by Bramble. Mancini fires back but unable to move the champion. Unable to make him back up. Now blood from the cut at the corner of the right eye of Mancini. That's the less dangerous situation for him at the moment. The left eyelid with the swelling is his primary problem. Ramble just stands flat-footed, circles slowly, inexorably in the middle of the ring with a counter-punching offense, making each punch count. Under a minute to go on round 10. Some people thought this fight would not go this long. The theory being that the fighter does not often do as well the second time around when he's been beaten as badly as Mancini was. Stopped in the 14th round by Bramble in Buffalo last June. But it's almost a replay. Mancini, the busier boxer. Bramble, the counter puncher, landing the more effective and damaging blows. A cut again to Mancini as it was in the first fight. This time it came in round five. fight in Buffalo when the fight was stopped. You may recall he was ahead on two of the judges' scorecards. Hard to know how they're seeing this one. It's very similar. You all right? You feel all right? Okay, good. My, my the bell for round number 11, the Mancini corner, slow to leave as they work on those damaged eyes of the challenger Ray Boom Boom Mancini. A near sellout crowd here at the Lawler Event Center, the largest attendance ever for a sporting event at this facility in Reno. For this dramatic rematch. Ray Boom Boom Mancini, the former champion, against the man who won the title from him, Livingstone Bramble. Bramble, a practically unknown club fighter when he got the shot against Mancini, a 4-1 to underdog. Scored a 14th round knockout of Ray Mancini and trying to defend here in his first title defense against the man from whom he won the crown. Dr. Filippelli was again up in the Mancini corner watching Paul Percyfield, the Mancini cut man, work on the eyes. And Percyfield has done an excellent job. Mancini's left eye, the swollen one, has really not gotten any worse since uh, its worst effect, which came in round number seven. of the many controversies between the managers in this fight, Lou Duva for Bramble, David Wolf for Mancini, has been the hairstyle 
at Livingstone Bramble. They had the commissioner of the state of Nevada come to his workout and to make a determination whether or not he could wear it in this cornrow style, the Rastafarian style that he chooses. And Dave Wolf, even now, still complaining about it, feeling that when he gets in close, the way that it is knotted and flapping around there, that that can be a further irritation to the eyes of Ray Mancini. But I must say we have seen no effect of that so far. One of the more bizarre training camps in the history of boxing conducted by Bramble with snakes and chickens and blowing bubbles and all kinds of eccentric activities involved. But you can see that whatever it is works for him. He's a relaxed, confident champion. Bramble scoring the short punches inside. Mancini circling a little bit more here in round 11. And a good solid right uppercut by the champion again snaps back the head of Mancini. Under the 32nd mark we go. Mancini again the busier fighter in this round and it's always hard to know how this affects the eyes of the judges. Will they go for the aggressive busier fighter or pick out the solid counter punches of the champion Bramble? And again we remind you that in the Buffalo fight won by Bramble on a stoppage Mancini led on two of the cards with a very similar kind of pace and attack. Now Bramble starting to pick up the pace. Working to the body, then to the head, and snapping out that left jab. Backing up Mancini. We are between rounds 11 and 12. And looking into the quarters of Ray Mancini on the right, Livingstone Bramble on the left. You got this here now? Jab your way in with double jabs, and I want you to snap the right hand. And you're doing good. Tower it down. I get it. I know what you're doing. All right, all right, all right. Bring it back. Come on, Bramble. Hey, come on. Bring it back. 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 Okay, your uppercuts are working beautifully. Get away. Lou Duva asking for double jabs from the champion and more shots to the body. In the Mancini corner, the concentration on that left eye, swollen and still a problem for him. You can see the slice on the eyelid. But they have done an outstanding job in uh, keeping him active and able to see. As you can see, while his vision must be somewhat impaired, it's not nearly as bad as you might expect at this point into round number 12. Nothing wrong with his hair. Mancini comes out jabbing, and now Bramble for the first time going after him with a wild lunge and picking up his pace. Solid left jab by Bramble. Remember, under the WBA rules, the old traditional championship distance of 15. And we are in round number 12 of another grueling battle, very similar, really, to the first one. Mancini with cuts with both eyes. Bramble with his patient, plotting, counter-punching style, scoring the heavier, more damaging blows. Mancini, the busier boxer of the two. And interestingly, almost all of the action right in the middle of the ring and it's a 22 foot ring the champion's choice with that of his corner and yet he has really taken no advantage of it obviously feels he doesn't have to now mancini scoring primarily to the arms and shoulders of bramble and bramble with that good sharp right uppercut when he found the opening Another solid right by the champion, Bramble. No visible damage to the champion anywhere. Now Bramble with a combination. Backs up Mancini, forcing them back toward the ropes. Mancini pulls his way back to center ring and is answered with a left jab from the champion. Under a minute to go. In round number 12.
largely partisan crowd of nearly 12,000. Bramble seems to just shut it all out. He knows they're against him. And that's tribute to his concentration, pride, and determination. Another solid left by the champion, Bramble. And an overhand right. He's been trying to land that. He finally got one in. Missed that one badly. Mancini defending well against that last flurry as we're into the final seconds of round number 12. Don't let this guy steal him. Run away from you, here. Don't let him steal him. Let me see that jab. Two jabs. I want to see a double jab. Round number 13, an eager Mancini off the stool in a hurry, and now Mills Lane has ordered the Bramble corner to take some of the Vaseline off his face. And now we resume action in this 13th round. I have it as a very close fight in my scorecard. Again, a difficult one to call. Do you prefer the busier, more active challenger Mancini's attack, landing more punches, throwing more punches, or do you score the effective punches, the damaging blows? which certainly fall in favor of Bramble, as evidenced by the cuts to both eyes of the challenger Mancini. Mancini has only backed up a couple of times himself, but he has not been able to move Bramble. Does not appear to have the power in his punches to damage the champion. But nonetheless, could win a decision with his boxing style if the judges see it that way. Hard to know. Remember the last fight stopped in the 14th round when Bramble with a rally caught an obviously fatigued Mancini and had him nearly out. Tim Ryan ringside, sellout crowd, Reno Event Center, WBA lightweight championship, Glamour Pack. And I suppose any time that Ray Boom Boom Mancini is in the ring, especially in a typical brawl like this, drama is hard to miss. Blood gushing from the cut at the corner of the right eye. Left jab by Mancini got through. Left jab back from Bramble. A little more movement by both fighters. A wild right just grazed Mancini. Bramble has changed his style again here, starting to circle. Throwing the bigger bombs. The most effective punches are the short ones. Elbows in. Little pops and uppercuts and straight punches from both sides. Maybe a cut under the left eye of Bramble, but that could also be Mancini blood. Bramble letting Mancini lead the pace here. And again, these have to be Scoring punches for Mancini in the eyes of the judges if the other man is not throwing any at all. Angry cut at the corner of the right eye, and there may be some of that blood getting into his eye, affecting vision in the right eye now. Under the 30-second mark in round 13. Good combination scored by Bramble. That backed up Mancini. Final seconds of round 13. You're doing all right. In the Bramble corner, yes, indeed, he does have a cut under the left eye. That is not a dangerous location because it will bleed down, of course, and not affect his vision. If it were to open up dramatically, then, of course, uh, the doctor might get involved, but that does not figure at the moment to be a problem for Bramble. In the Mancini corner, again, the continuous work on both eyes. Paul Percyfield applying the Vaseline to that cut on the left eyelid, primarily trying to keep the swelling down so Mancini can see. And is blood leaking in from the cut at the corner of the right eye? It appeared to be in round number 13. Again, Mancini leaping off the stool, showing Bramble he's still fresh and strong. But the cuts, of course, 
can be a factor even in the late rounds here as blood streams from the corner of the right eye of Mancini. The first scar of battle for Bramble occurred in the 13th round. A slight cut under the left eye. Ace Murata, the cut man in his corner, seems to have done a good job in stemming the flow. Tim Ryan ringside of this dramatic lightweight rematch. Right hand by Bramble landed. What may be the last appearance of Ray Boom Boom Mancini, win or lose, he has indicated it is possible this might be his last hurrah. Bramble, for his part, could care less about what Mancini does. He's interested in retaining his championship, whether the public accepts him the same degree of affection or not. He doesn't expect it. And they're just trying to show his skills, and they are considerable, as we have seen in these two championship bouts. Mancini staying busy, obviously in excellent physical condition for this bout. He demonstrated that with his activity through 14 rounds, forcing the pace. What seems to be missing is the power, and perhaps at his best, he doesn't have the power to handle Livingstone Bramble. It has to be one of the stronger lightweights we've seen in recent years. Bramble pecks away with a jab, his corner asking him to do so. Missed with a wild right. Good recovery. You can see how Bramble gets his balance back in those seemingly awkward, unorthodox moves. Chopping overhand right, raised the chin of Mancini. Mancini landed a right. Bramble with two solid left. Second grueling war between these two boxes. And as usual, Mancini showing the scars of battle more readily. Good flurry by Mancini. Finally backing up Bramble for the first time in the bout. That gets a rise from the partisan crowd. But Bramble calmly fires a short right back to the chin. 15 seconds left in round 14. Coming to the end of the 14th round, Juba's corner wanting him to rally over these final seconds. Mancini corner. Ray Mancini has gotten himself to the 15th round in his effort to win the title back. How are the judges seeing this? Hard to know. The damage clearly on the face of Ray Boom Boom Mancini. But nonetheless, as he was in the last fight where two judges had him ahead, going into the 14th, he's been the busier fighter. Livingstone Bramble, a similar style as he fought in the first fight. Patient, landing the more damaging blows. And again, Alexis Arguello with his exhortation for his friend Ray B Boom Boom Mancini no rushing over to the corner to no with words of encouragement. This is it. Round number 15. Mills Lane has them touch gloves. It could be the last round of boxing for Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Do you have him ahead watching at home? We'll find out what the judges say if it goes through these final three minutes. Livingstone Bramble must be at least concerned that the possibility of a decision going to Mancini exists. Let's see if he picks up his pace in an effort to get this one stopped, as he did in the 14th round of the first fight. Mancini circling, jabbing. Blood from the cut at the corner of the right eye does not appear to be too much of a problem. The left eye is angry. And Bramble has landed three effective jabs, bringing more blood from the face of Mancini. And Mills Lane is calling for the doctor again. Time has been stopped in the 15th round. The crowd unhappy with it. Dr. Charles Filippini, the head physician here, appointed by the Nevada Commission, comes up to check the cut. Ray Mancini is heard to say, I see well, I see fine. Doctor agrees. X 
action continues. Mancini leading with two left hooks. They were not damaging. Bramble, stoic, unexpressive. Only occasionally does he show you a little showboating or a smile or a, a wave to Mancini to come in. Most of the time, his face is a mask, perhaps like one of his voodoo dolls. Right hand lead by Mancini landed, but unable to hurt Bramble. Only once or twice in this bout has he actually moved Bramble with a punch. Made him back up. Nonetheless, again, we caution that the judges may feel the more aggressive style of Mancini. With the crowd cheering him on, they may see him ahead. And Bramble certainly has to be aware of that. Good combination scored by Mancini. Giving it his all in this final round, as everybody knew he would. Sharp left scored by Bramble. Under a minute to go in the fight. Typically courageous, gritty, let it all hang out display by Ray Mancini. What it must be for Livingstone Bramble to have to deal with this force in front of him, knowing the crowd wants desperately for Mancini to win the title back. It is great tribute to Bramble that he has maintained his composure, kept his fight planned. And for his part, hoping that the damaging blows he has scored will be enough in the eyes of the judges. A right scored by Mancini. Bramble waves him in again and then bangs back to the body. Bramble missed everything in the last exchange. He's much better in close with short punches. Final seconds, a good left by Bramble. Mancini firing away. The fight comes to a close in the center of the ring where they have been since the opening bell. Is there in this moment the respect and the affection that two boxers who have been through a war like that normally give to each other? It appeared there was. Was this the last appearance of Ray Boom Boom Mancini? We'll find out. And the judges awarded Livingstone Bramble a unanimous decision by a single point on each scorecard last Saturday night. And with us now live here in our New York studio, he's smiling, is Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Ray, thank you for joining us. Now, going into that fight, there was a lot of bad blood between you and Bramble, but after the fight ended, the two of you embraced in the ring and you told Bramble he was the champion. No, then, no. Now, wait a minute now. Later in the post-fight press conference, Bramble had this to say after he thought about it, and then we'll hear from Ray. First of all, I apologize publicly to Ray and his mother and his father for any insult or discrimination I made for the family. I like them. I like to say I'm sorry for any of that. Thank you. For the fight. And second of all, I like to thank Ray Mancini. There's no way Ray Mancini should retire unless he wants to retire. Yeah, but he fought like a good champion. Yeah, we were just talking about this because there's a lot of, you can read it different ways. Yes. You said he was Those a good champion. What'd you say to him? After the fight, when the fight ended, we looked at it and said, you're a good champion. He defended like a good champion. He fought hard, he fought his best the whole